Max Christensen. I work at the Utah State Hospital. I'm the assistant manager down here, and I've been asked by Derek Haney to uh, share some uh, things about gardening and starting your seeds for the year. So we're going to do that. Um, there's a few things I have out on, out on the tables. Um, if you're going to grow different things at home, uh, there are certain things that are important to have. One is uh, a way to have light for your plants, and I use just shop lights. There's different kinds now. You can get LED lights, there's different kinds, but I like the four footers and uh, they work really well. And so you need to have a light source, you need to have um, water close by, and uh, I have a hose there down in my basement by the washer and dryer, and I have stacks of shelves, and I have uh, two or three lights side by side, two each, and those four foot fluorescent lights, bulbs, and and uh, I, I grow things there. So, I got a question. So okay. it it doesn't matter a specific type of light. So even just a fluorescent light. I thought there were specific bulbs for growing, or that doesn't matter as much. Well, they have grow lights. They're a lot more expensive for your vegetable gardening and preparing those seedlings. It doesn't really matter the light that much. I used to get all into the lights, and I did all this research into different kinds of lights, and. And, uh, you know, it just doesn't matter that much if you're going to get them used to the outside light and then transplant them in your garden. If it was something, something you were keeping for a while, it would make a big difference. So um, I can actually show you, I might do a little bit of that later, but, you know, now we're on the topic. Let me just, I don't, you probably won't be able to, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but these are some tomato plants that I grew from home. These have been a little over a month and a half uh, growing under those lights, and you want to... Uh, really not start them more than about a month and a half before you're going to plant them. So if you're going to plant them in the middle of May, you want to you know, start them about the 1st of April or the very end of March. But if you look at these, I don't know if you'll be able to see this real well, but the bottom of these, you have a little bit of purplish on the leaves, okay? Hold it right there. I'm going to zoom right in. And that's a, a phosphorus deficiency because you're not getting the outside light from the sun and you're doing it under little lower light conditions. But you know what, don't get hung up on that. That doesn't matter. As long as they look healthy and you get them growing, you can get them used to the outside. We'll talk a little bit about that in a little bit, but they'll do just fine. And so um, the lighting, as far as the bulbs, you can use LED lights. I haven't used those, but they have some nice different uh, fixtures for that and or just the four foot fluorescent lights I use. So anyway, those are some uh, items. Um, as far as growing, you have to have some containers and there's all different kinds. Uh, at the garden centers, it seems like they never have the things that I always wanted. And uh, every once in a while I could find some and then I'd, I'd, I'd purchase them. But uh, I like these right here. These are three foot or three inch press and fits. They're not really three inch. It's like a two by four. That's not really a two by four. These are probably two and a half inches by two and a half, but they call them three inch press and fit. Um, this is what I like to start all my seedlings in. So if you look at that, um, you can see there's some lettuce seedlings in there. And I started those. One of the things about lettuce seedlings is um, you really don't want to cover those. Most things you cover with some uh, seed starter mix uh, and you do it about three to four times the depth of the seed. But with lettuce, if it's older lettuce and you've been saving it for a while, you're better off not covering it because it actually helps, the light helps in the germination of that. But let's look at a couple of these uh, different seed starting mixes. I've got one here from Jiffy, uh, and I've got one from Fertilome. I love Fertilome. They're one of my uh, favorite sources for um, potting soils and seed uh, mixes. But it's, it's a good idea to have um, a seed starter mix. And the reason why that's important is because it's really fine, and there's some different types here. I'm going to put some on the table there from that one and some on the table for this other one. And, and they're different. Um, this one has a lot more perlite in it, the white stuff that's there. But they're really fine. And what's nice about that is with uh, certain plants, especially tomatoes, you want to transplant them deeper than they were growing originally in the soil. And if you put um, a whole bunch of seedlings like this, if these uh, were tomatoes, you would take this out and you'd break it up and you'd uh, you'd be able to get each individual plant a lot easier with this seed starting mix as opposed to a regular potting soil. The potting soil has more aggregate, it has bigger 
uh, components in it and the, the, the roots can get disturbed and destroyed a lot easier if you're not using a seed starter mix. So that's why that's important. Um, another thing that uh, I do when I'm planting these is I, I usually get the soil somewhat moist and I'll put some of that in a, in a little bucket like this and uh, I'll put the seed starter mix in and I'll, I'll get some water and I'll put it in there. I'll just go ahead and do some here. Or just I just put some water in there. I'm going to take this and kind of I'm going to put a little bit more in there uh, because that's not quite as much as I like. I'm going to go ahead. And... and I might get too much of those, but uh, you can see that in there. Now, if I take that, it's still. That's, I wouldn't want any more than that. If I were to do that and do it real hard, you might get water coming out, and I'd rather it to be able to break apart. So that's probably a little bit more than I'd like. So I would typically put a little more in. I don't get all, and, and it would work just like that. It'd be fine. But I'm going to actually put a little more in there so I can get it just to the consistency I would prefer. And, uh, and you know what? Everything doesn't have to be exact. I mean, how, I, how would you describe the consistency of the bird? What does it feel like in your hand to be the optimal? Well, you just want it to be able to break apart so it's not in a bunch of clumps. I mean, that's, I think that's about right. It's got a, probably a little more than I'd even put in there, but I, it's going to be fine. And like I say, there's a lot of ways to do things, and you just don't want it so soaked that it's going to, that when you go like that, you're getting water dripping, you know. If you're, if you're doing that and you're getting water dripping out, you probably got a little too much. So I'd take that, and then I've got um, one of these three-inch press and fit containers. These are the ones that I like to use for starting almost everything. So I would take that in there and fill it up and I just kind of get it about to, to that point. And I, I usually put a, another one and push it down on there just a little bit, but I don't push too hard. And sometimes I don't even do that, but it, it makes it more consistent across the board there, but it, it doesn't really matter. You can, you can have it rough too. So anyway, I don't usually put it clear to the top. I usually get it about where it's at there. And then um, you put your seedlings in. I've got some tomatoes there, and I, I think, because I forgot my tomatoes, I'm going to use the ones at the Greens ha house here, and Mark and I can have a talk about that. <laughs> so if we're doing it at the greenhouse, we'd do something like this. Over here, if you can see that, it's a 288 tray. There's 288 uh, tomato seeds in there, okay? And that's how we would do it. And with tomatoes, you want to cover them about three or four times the depth of the soil when, after you get them planted. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a few seedlings in here and not too many. Whoa, that was more than I wanted. So if you, if you get more than you want if, and there's a lot of moisture in there, then you might have a little bit of an issue. So, but at any rate, there's a whole bunch. So Mark and I will have a good little discussion about that. And we'll, uh, we'll plant those though, and then we'll transplant them. They'll be fine. It won't cause any grief at all. I'm just going to put those back in there and that's going to be a whole bunch of tomato seedlings. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of that soil from, the, from this uh, and put it over the top. I don't know if you can see that. So roughly how much? Uh, two to three times the depth. And there again, there's, it doesn't have to be exact, but around there. And then I just take another one of these trays and just press it down a little bit like that. And then that's ready. And if I don't feel like it's quite moist enough, I will take a spray bottle and this, is, this has got enough moisture, so I don't need to do it, but usually I don't get quite, quite as wet, and then I take a spray bottle, and I just spray the top a little bit with a spray bottle. And then there's two ways that you can um, kind of keep the moisture in there, and there's, there's really other ways. You don't even have to cover it, but if you have a piece of saran wrap or plastic, you can put it over the top of this, but you only want to do that six days. If you do it more than six days, you start getting mold and algae in there and it can harm your plants. So if they haven't germinated in that time, you take it off and you just keep it moist. But if you have one of these domes and you have um, one of these containers here, then you can take your seedlings uh, that you've got right there and you can put the dome over it. And really this is the best way to do it because if you'd put a dome on like this, you can leave that several weeks and usually you don't get algae because there's just more air, in, more air in there and you just don't have as many problems with the algae getting started in the soil. Where do you find so, domes? Like uh, you can get them at most garden centers. 
They usually have those, but it keeps the humidity high and it helps that uh, the seedling so that they'll get started off really well. And, uh, so that's that's what I usually do. I, I do it both ways. I, I put a little plastic on it because it's cheap and sometimes, you know, that that's all you've got. But after six days, if you're not careful, you'll start seeing mold in there if you don't take it off. And peppers take longer than tomatoes. Usually tomatoes will be up in that those six, seven days and you just take it off and they're great. But with peppers, you have to take that off and just keep it moist and there the next week it'll they'll germinate. How often are you watering? Not watering them at all until until they germinate usually. If you notice that the soil's dry, and it usually won't be if you put plastic on there or you've got a dome, usually just leave it like that until it germinates. But you check them, I mean every couple of days, or really you should check it every day. But if it looks like it's getting a little dry, then just take it off and put a little more moisture in there, make sure it stays moist. But a lot of times you don't have to if you've got the right amount of water in there to begin with. So once they come up, um, then you want to, uh, get the plastic off or the dome because they'll do better with this with everything so with the once they come up well once up, they okay. you'd call it sprout i'd call it germinate okay. i mean it's once they germinate they, the leaves come up um so they we'll, may just be like half an inch or a quarter well inch. yeah once they come up just a little bit as long as enough of them come up if it's only one or two you'd want to leave this on until if you planted 20 seeds in there and you had two or three in there that came up i would leave the dome on until most of them you know, or all of them came up, but at least most of them, okay? Um, so, a couple other things as far as going over, uh, timing on when to plant things. Let's talk about that for a moment. So, I have a suggested vegetable planting guide that's done by Utah State University. And if you go online and you just go Utah State University and suggested planting dates, you can get this and it will have the different times that you'll want to plant in the garden. And in fact, the, the newer version, if you, if you look at it, it actually will bring up different areas like Provo and Springville or whatever. So Provo seems to be a little colder than Orem. I live in Orem, but if you look at Provo and you're trying to figure out when to plant the, uh, your tomatoes, that would be um, May 20th in Provo. So what this does, it breaks down your hardy vegetables, your semi-hardy, your tender, and then it has a very tender, and your tomatoes are the very tender. So a couple things we need to talk about. Um, when we planted these, uh, we planted too many in there for one thing, and I don't usually ever do it that way, but a couple of things with that. You can take seedlings, put them out in your hand, and pick them out individually, like with tomato seedlings. Sometimes they're really small, and it gets difficult. One of the things we do here at the greenhouse is we'll make what's called a little trough like this. And uh, we take a three by five card and we fold it hot dog style. And then we take and fold twice, two little folds there. And that keeps seedlings from falling out the backside. And then we cut this on an angle like that. And we put our seedlings in and then we can tap it and have a lot more accuracy in how many seeds went out. So you notice I put in a whole bunch of seeds there accidentally. But you know what? It, if you wanted a whole bunch of seeds, it wouldn't really matter. But if you didn't, then that can create you a little bit of a problem. Let's say I want 10 of one variety. Say I've got a, one that's called, um, it's a hybrid called Early Girl. And a lot of people are familiar with that. It's a tomato and I know we're going to talk about heirlooms too. But Say it's, it could be something else. It could be uh, a DX5212 tomato. That's one that I've got that's a good one. And say you want 10 total. I still would plant all 10 in this little container to begin with, okay? So I would take, take them out in my hand and plant them individually, which would be a little more accurate. Or I'd put them in something like this and tap it and get, a, get them spread out there evenly rather than just dump them in. I got little carried away, but that's okay. You can see that people can goof up even if they've done it for a lot of years. You get a little anxious and you overdo something. But the thing is, is once you get them in there and they, they start to germinate and about the time they get their true leaves, or for me even before, if you have a lot of seedlings in there, I will take them and transplant them out into whatever container I'm gonna put them in. So if I'm getting something like, uh, you'd probably get at a garden center, you could get something like this. These uh, are 606s, there's, there's six in each one of these, and uh, you can break these apart actually and have six plants in each one. And so I would fill these with soil 
I would transplant them in, in uh, a container like this after I've started them in here. I start all my varieties typically in, in one container like this and then I transplant them afterwards into a different container. I keep, I keep wanting to get to something that we need to do and that is, is you always need to keep track of what you're growing. So as soon as you get done, actually before I, I plant things, I usually make a tag for it and I usually just put it on a piece of paper because it's cheap. You can actually buy little uh, things like this that you can write things on and then a little tag and put it with your stuff. But if you notice these, I've written on here information that tells me what it is. And it also t tells me the, the type it is and I'm kind of crazy. Some people get into family history, you know. Well, I'm into family history with my uh, tomato plants. This one has, it grew in 1989 and 1990, and it's the 30-year-old seed. But sometimes I will have seeds where I will show it was grown in 1993, 1995, 1999, 2003, or whatever. And it has the generations for that particular variety of tomato. moment. So I used to have little heat um, maps that I purchased years ago and I used those and they work well and I had different ways that I made some but through the years I just haven't used them much and I actually did something different this year and I'm going to tell you about this but you're going to have to check with a, a heating contractor make sure it's okay because I don't want to get in trouble just be careful. So my furnace um, I decided I, I had some some old seed that I wanted to make sure it germinated. I wanted to baby it along a little bit. So I put a little washcloth about that big on top of my furnace and I put the, uh, the, the plastic over the top, so not a big dome, but I had a whole bunch of these with different types of peppers because they do like a little bottom heat. And I put that uh, plastic over them and I stuck them all on that little um, hand towel that's just sitting on top of my furnace. So this and it, furnace great. Yeah, it's you don't want it directly on. I, I put a little hand tail on there and they're, and they're doing fine. I germinated um, actually these 30 year old tomato seedlings that way because I, I wanted to baby them along and give them a little help. So, uh, but normally I haven't done that for a lot of years and if it takes longer to germinate, I don't worry about it. I just don't give them any fertilizer until they're up. And then I take the plastic off at six days. If it takes two weeks to germinate, then I usually don't worry about it. So it's a timing thing. So the heat just makes them grow, germinate quicker. So it just would make mean if you didn't it, eat, it just will take longer. Well, generally speaking, if you have healthy seeds that are fairly new, I would say yes. If they're a little older, then sometimes you need to give them all the benefit you can give them. And that extra heat, um, I wanted to make sure those germinated well. And okay, we're just going to switch gears for for a moment to some onions. Um, we talked before about how I grow quite a few plants or seedlings in one container. This is just a three inch press and fit and I've got a lot of onions in there. You know, you might wonder, well that seems kind of crazy, but it's okay. I go ahead and plant quite a few of them in, in this container and then I take the onions and about this time I, I take them outside and I get them used to the outside light and then I will transplant these and they're, they're tiny little things when I transplant them but you don't have near as many problems with them bolting. A lot of times you get the little ones from the stores and things and they have a tendency to, to bolt the first, se the first season. And so with onions, they're not supposed to set seed till the second season. And if you're saving onions, you typically only wanna save one variety because they will cross with other varieties. Um, this onion is called White Sweet Spanish and it does really well in this area. There's a Utah Sweet Spanish that does well, a yellow onion. Um, I like this White Sweet Spanish. We grew some here at the greenhouse that were huge. I mean really, really big. And I saved some seeds from that the next year and I've got that uh, right here. So this is from the greenhouse but I've also got some from a packet. And so I figured to give them some genetic diversity I would grow some from each and then next year I'll probably save some seeds from some of these. If I remember right, the Spanish might be one because the challenge with like Walla Walla that we love, once you pick them, you've got to eat them within 30 days or they yeah. start to True. germinate. But I think it was a Spanish. These like store six or nine months. These yeah. store really well, and so they're 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 a good onion, and and they're not really really um, too much of a bite. I don't think they're too strong. Let, let's talk about some different varieties for just a second. I had over here 
this uh, suggested planting dates, and I'd like to just go over a couple of these things that are on here. So this hardy group, it's got here, so for the orem area, about the 15th of March would be when you could plant them outside. So if I was planting onions inside, I would want to do that, um, you know, about four weeks or so before that, or a little bit of, little bit of time before that. Um, these I actually planted, uh, this one was the 14th of March. So these, these I didn't plant that long ago. It's the 24th today. And so these I planted, uh, I didn't put a date, and I should have. So see, now I don't know when I planted it. You always want to put a date, too, so you know when you, when you started something. Over here, they've got on this hardy group onions, peas. You, can, you never plant your peas in a container like this. You always plant those outdoors. Um, radishes, I always plant those outdoors. It doesn't have on here kale, and I love kale. I've got kale out in my garden already. I planted it inside. It's been out there for probably several weeks. I've got broccoli outside that's been out there for several weeks. If you look at this hardy group, you can put broccoli in the ground about the 15th of March. And uh, people a lot of times think that's too early. Or they think it's just, you know, sh you should wait. But the problem is if you wait, then you're, you're, set, you're kind of beset more with diseases and, and aphids and things like that because they're not growing in the environment that's best for them. If they get established real well, then you can leave them in there and pick all the, the main uh, top off and pick all the side shoots for a long time. So 15th and of March, are you planting a seed or are you planting a seedling that you started? I started that earlier indoors and had it a, a four week or six week old transplant and then planted it outside the 15th of March. Broccoli. And so I've got broccoli outside. It's, you know, it's doing pretty well right now. It's growing. It, it had frost the other day. It didn't, you know, it didn't hurt it. It, it can handle some frost as long as it doesn't get too, too cold. But, uh, if most people plant things too late. That's you know. exactly what we did. And we got what you said, the aphids and the bugs. And we love broccoli at yeah. our garden. It's just, it's incredible how flavorful, even the small little shoots. So that's it. We need to be planting soon. Yeah. This if you plant them great. sooner, most of the time I've, I've found that they don't get as many uh, bug problems. At least that's my, been my experience. And so um, lettuce, normally I have lettuce out in the garden by now. Um, that's in this, is, let's see, it's in the second group, semi-hardy, so that's a little bit later, and it would have a date on here, but uh, let's just look and see what it's got for Salt Lake. Um, they're saying March 20th in Salt Lake, and, and that's about right. I've got some lettuce over here that I think I, we, we looked at earlier, but this isn't quite ready to, to transplant. I've got some that has been transplanted right here. This is a variety that I love, and I'm not sure there's, um, this is a Red Sweet Crisp. I have, uh, this is, this, give this another about week, and I could transplant it out in, into, the, uh, into the garden. But I'd like to get it a little bigger than this before I transplant it out there. So you even pre-seed your lettuce, because we've always just planted that straight in the garden, but I guess this gets a jump start. It does, and what it allows me to do is do a pattern in my raised bed, so Every single inch of space when it fills out is just um, where you want it. You know, it's, it's, you're using your space the best that you possibly can. And so, um, but lettuce, it can go out there about March 20th, and I do start it indoors. You can start things outdoors too. There's different ways to do things. And it, but there again, with your lettuce, if you do it early, it, it lasts longer. You can pick it, you can cut it, and it comes again. You can cut it and come again, and pretty soon uh, it starts getting warmer weather. And, it loses its flavor, and, and, uh, but I leave them in the ground and I save seeds from them. Okay, so I wanted to show you some tomatoes that we planted uh, here at the greenhouse. This is a 288 tray, and, and I guess I wanted to show you, I can get one where I want to get them <laughs> instead of a whole bunch at once. But uh, I put one seed at each of those. There might be a couple that have two seeds, but for the most part, there's one seed in each of those and there's 288. And I'm gonna show you how to cover those uh, it, what we do here, we have some seedling mix here, propagating mix, and I get some of this, and then I, I put it in my hands like that, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm just going to get a little bit of that on each one of those, and we're going to go across this whole thing, and once we water them in, they'll, uh, some of that soil will pack down just a little bit, but I'm trying to get basically three to four times the depth of the 
of the the seedling. So I'm going to come and grab some more. But you can see I've done not quite half of that, but it doesn't take too long. You just kind of go through there, and we're just going to get a little more on all of that. And we'll just do one more and probably finish it up here. Okay, so um, that looks pretty good. Everything's been covered about the right depth. I'm just going to clean off the sides here. I'm going to be careful not to cut myself because with the, these can, uh, trays, you've got to be kind of careful not to get the edge of those. You want to take these out and have me water it in and show that? Yeah. Um, we'll take a break for just a second. We'll go out in the greenhouse. We'll water this in. Okay, so we're out in the greenhouse, and I've got this uh, tray here that we did, the 288 tray of the tomatoes. And if you were at home, and you, you would spray this with a spray bottle. And, uh, but here at the greenhouse, we'll go ahead and do it with our spray nozzle. Now, I've got another uh, hose over here. This one has what's called a breaker on it at the end that helps diffuse all the water evenly. But this one has the, the water-soluble fertilizer in it, and I don't want the water-soluble fertilizer on those seedlings until they germinate. And so I'm going to use this other hose over here. I'm just going to walk over here, and I'm going to turn that on. And you can see that we have a pretty fine spray. Now one of the things in the greenhouse, and this is kind of the same thing at home, is I always check the water temperature because the, the hose can get pretty warm water temperature in it. And if you're watering your plants outside, that's a good thing to check that hose and make sure it's not really hot because it can that can harm your plants. So this is getting cool right now. So I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. And I'm going to bring this up high and go over the top of it. I do not want to disturb the soil too much. And if the seedlings were exposed, I certainly wouldn't want to, to uh, spray the seedlings off of there. So I'm just going to go ahead and spray that. We're going to get it nice and even and get a fair amount of moisture on there. Because when I did this, I didn't have moisture in the soil. And I usually do. But I didn't want to... I didn't actually want the moisture in that soil because it's easier to put the seedlings in without it. And as long as I give it some good moisture here, it'll be fine. But you do need to get a, you know, pretty good amount of moisture in there. And then you go ahead and you'd want to put the dome on that. Um, here in the greenhouse, we have some, uh, we have our own little heat mats by using PVC pipe. So if you look over here, we'll. Uh, if you can come over here with me, we'll just come over here. These little PVC pipes that we have, they have uh, water running through them with a water heater. It keeps it at a, a temperature that we want. And I'm going to take one of these domes and put on there. This one looks like we need to clean off a little bit, but at least I'll use this one so you can see. We'll put that on top of there. And then we would wait till that germinates. Most of these we cleaned off, but I didn't have a new one right out here with me, so or a clean one. But that's what you do. Um, you, you do the same thing at home with your little container that you put your seedlings in. You'd spray it with um, a spray bottle, get it moist, and then either put plastic on it or put a dome on it until it germinates. And most things you don't need to worry about the bottom heat, but you know, if you're really concerned about it, there's things you can do to accommodate that. Mm -hmm.